Greetings to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray you're all well. Thank you for coming along to this video. I want to talk about um, just blatant false teachers of God's Word. And you get false teachers and then you get those who appear to be teachers but don't touch God's Word at all. And they completely confuse you with regards to a message and um, it is very bizarre especially in this video uh, by a Louis Giglio um, when I first read his second name I came up with something else but um, I'll let you figure out what I thought his second name meant but um, I'm not I'm not here to cast aspersions upon individuals but we look at teachings from so-called pastors and this this is a pastor of a church and I'll, I'll show you the details in a minute but we look at the message that's trying to be portrayed in this video and I skipped through this video it, it pops up in the recommended videos and I thought well why I know why because we, we are force-fed false teachers in our recommended feeds here and there each day because I do believe it's the devil's attempt to get us to listen to something watered down and completely twisted and not at all what the Bible is all about and all these people are listening they're, well, they don't look very happy to be there. And some are looking in a completely different direction. And, of course, we've got the masked people around this individual. Because you, you've got to keep the narrative going, right? You know. Um, so, this video is about... <laughs> Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. And as soon as I read that, I thought, well, that's completely wrong. That That is terribly going against Scripture. Why do I say that? Well, I'll show you. Proverbs 25, verses 21 to 22. If your enemy is hungry... Give him food to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will, will reward you. So, what, what am I seeing here? Give him food to eat if your enemy is hungry. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. So if your enemy came to your door and asked you to help him out, what you're, you're going to say, I'm not letting the enemy eat at my table. No, you be accommodating and show the enemy the godliness that's in you. That is what we should be, salt and light in this world, even to our enemies. And yes, I find that difficult from time to time to do just that. We all do. But if we show people our love through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, even to our enemies, that's glorifying the love of the Lord through us. But no. Uh-uh. Well, this pastor says, no, uh, you can't, you can't uh, allow the enemy at your table. Okay, well, that goes against th this uh, verse and many other verses I've read in the Bible that um, contradicts exactly what you are saying. So this uh, pastor, so-called Louis Giglio, Giglio, and he's, <laughs> he'll invite you at his table as long as you wear a face mask. And um, I, I just, I just, words fail me as to what, pastors actually are trying to portray because I went through skipped through the entire video and he wrote on a on a pad some words 
that he just came up with as if to say this is what I've said isn't it profound that's how he just came across and music played in the background as he said it and I thought well where's God's word in this video I went through it and there was no pulpit there was nothing he stood behind with the word in front of him it was just him on the stage it was all about him and nothing else there, there's I didn't hear one Bible for it but no I skipped through it for a little while I didn't really watch it but I had to do a video on this to let people know that we should be careful we really should and when you look at the details of the video when you go to the description area it, it tells you things that can also be misleading I mean in the description area of uh, this this particular video and I'm sure all the videos Passion City Church it, it looks legit it looks legitimate it, but tune in for an, an amazing message as Pastor Louis Giglio encourages us to accept the invitation of Jesus to a table for two and teaches us how to tune out the voice of the enemy who wants nothing more than to join us at that table and interrupt what God has to say to us. To be honest, from watching uh, through that video, skipping through it, I think um, th I don't think Jesus was in that entire room in that congregation, and I don't think he needed to interrupt what God was saying to him because he was doing a great job interrupting God with his own message rather than what God really has to say because if this so-called pastor was trying to tell us what God was trying to say he would have showed you the verse that I'd shown you that we should love our enemies there's, there's nowhere in the word where I read this you know I mean, when you see the struggle that King David had over Saul, I mean, Saul was perse persecuting and pursuing King David, and you can read in the in the in the book of Kings, the books of Kings, how this came about and how Saul was the anointed of God, and David still treated Saul as respected I think I mentioned book of Kings I apologize it's uh, in Samuel I mean David said that the Lord forbid that I should touch the Lord's anointed which was Saul God anointed Saul to be a king but David was more the righteous king and they were, in fact, enemies at loggerheads with one another. So they were enemies. But David respected Saul as the Lord's anointed. So you do have a contradiction there when you see a so-called church pastor talking about how you should not give any any um, leeway to your enemies well we shouldn't give leeway to Satan but by loving our enemies like I said earlier we show our love of the Lord through us and our actions and our deeds we bear fruit for the Lord by our fruit bearing we glorify the Lord in all that we do so if we're not willing to give an olive branch as it were to those who would come up against us and be our enemies now, how is that portraying jesus christ jesus was the lamb who said nothing who allowed the sadducees pharisees to accuse him and spit in his face and slap him round the face the lord did not do anything that would show us that he had displeasure with them the Lord just used scripture all the time and that's unfortunately what's lacking in this um, 
pastor's uh, so-called message. I mean, I'm trying to be honest here and say what we should do and what we shouldn't do. We should seek the word always. And when you see a, a, a pastor who claims to be a church pastor who does not go by the word whatsoever and goes by their own personal experience and what they believe is right or wrong, then there's a problem. They are not feeding the flock. They are not feeding people with the word. They're feeding them with a load of lies and conjecture that goes against the word of God rather than is in the same vein of God and his word. Now, you know, this is just one pastor. This is just one so-called teacher of God's word. You, you've got to be careful when you don't see God's word anywhere, where you don't see a pastor with a Bible in his hand, I would suggest walk away. Just give it no time at all. Don't give any attention to that pastor who does not give you the word of God or a pastor who uses the word of God to say how things are right in the world when they are actually not. You have to ascertain by what is right and what is wrong, what is true, what is false by the word. Now here's another message of God's word that shows us how we should be convicted by God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We should be going by this word to show the flock who we are teaching that God's word is the solid word and you can't deny that. I mean those who claim to be church pastors if they're not going by the word they're not church pastors. They're disasters. That's what they are. That's, I'm sorry but it, it is a disaster to have somebody in a church who claims to be a teacher of the God's word but doesn't use God's word. Preach the word. Be ready in all times, all seasons. And if you're going to use analogies of getting a table and, and sitting people down around a table, link it to something. If you're in a church giving a sermon, tell them why you're doing it. That's why probably most of the people in the congregation there look completely bewildered. They're probably thinking, what, what on earth am I doing here? What's he talking about? Because I, I study God's word every day and I, hadn't had, I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Well, God's word says different. It's, it's more what people have as personal feelings rather than what God actually said. So if you have a church and you're, pre you're preaching in a church... Go by God's word, not by your own word, because you're not a pastor, you're not a teacher, you're just a feature. This isn't just for people to, to watch and listen to and not learn a damn thing. I'm sorry, but it, it really gets to me why people are doing this, but then again, this must happen so the end might come. That's what the Lord said we would see in the last days. Ravenous wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. They, they will come in the church from within and bring the church down from within. And, you know, you know all I want to do with these individuals is just say, here, I've got a Bible for you. I suggest you use it in your sermons to teach people from this because right now you're not anything you're just uh, a decoration you're just somebody who is saying they they're doing god's word but are not 
Jesus said, many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Well, the Lord won't know them and he will tell them he doesn't know them. And that day is upon us very, very quickly. I, I do believe we are close to that day coming and it's so sad that some of these individuals will be left behind and they will be saying, but Lord, we did this, we did that in your name. Why didn't you take me? Why was I left behind? Well, that'll be why you don't go by the word. And um, I thank you all for coming along to this video. And I will ask you all, it's always my prayer and my hope that people come away from my videos straight to the word, straight to Jesus, straight to the Bible. It's not about me and my personal uh, prosperity, my personal um, popularity. I've never been popular. I don't really, I'm not really interested in being popular. I want, I want Jesus to be popular. Let's make Jesus popular today. Go to his word, go to prayer, let him know that you love him and thank him that he, he died for you. Stay in prayer, stay in the word. Love one another, even your enemies. Forgive one another and your enemies because Jesus loves us and he's forgiven us. So we should do the same. Thank you for watching this video. I love you all. God bless you all. Bye for now.